Hi Grandma! So I've arrived, started at 7.15 this morning and drove for about 14 hours, arrived here 9.15 in the Mount Olympus Hotel in Wisconsin Dells. I should mention this hotel is huge. I asked the guy at the front desk and he told me that they have 1600 rooms. When I was driving to the hotel, pulled onto the street that the hotel's on, and I saw a hotel that had Mount Olympus on the left. So I'm like, oh, this must be it. So I pulled in and it said, for check-in, go to Hotel Rome at 1701. And I was like, I don't even know what, the, what hotel and what address this is. So I pulled back onto the road and there was another Mount Olympus just up the street on the right. So I'm like, oh, that must be it. And I looked at the address when I was going by and it was like 1200. I was like, oh no, that's not it. And I kept driving and it was Mount Olympus, Mount Olympus, Mount Olympus. And there were all these Mount Olympus buildings. I was like, oh my God, how many hotels does this Mount Olympus have? And then finally I was getting to Mount Olympus and I saw the giant Colosseum on my left. I was like, oh, okay, that's Mount Olympus. I gotcha. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any footage of the drive, which is what I was hoping to do. I had some problems with the camera being technologically illiterate, so I figured it out. Hopefully tomorrow I can get a few shots in the car, but it didn't really matter. The drive wasn't too eventful anyway. Didn't stop anywhere except for White Castle to get tons of those little burgers, which are amazing. Also, normally I'm singing and and dancing a little bit in the car, but because Sunday night, last night, was the Argo game, I was yelling so much, go Argos, go, and you can probably even hear it, but my voice is completely shot, so the singing just wasn't there on the drive. So tomorrow, hopefully, I'll get a good night rest, get my singing voice up in Adam, and we can hit it first thing tomorrow morning. I'm excited. Good morning. So it's about almost 8 o'clock right now. It's a bit later than I wanted to leave, but that's fine. I'm only going to Minot, North Dakota, which is about a 10 hour drive, so we'll get there with stops probably 8 o'clock tonight, which isn't, isn't too late. Gives me lots of time, which is fine. So let's get ready and let's hit the road. So the way I would describe this morning would be brisk. It's windy and a little chilly. I'm just going to check to make sure that I've got this all framed outright on the camera and then we'll get going. So apparently it wasn't framed very well unless you just want to watch a shots of my chest while I talk the whole time. This is probably a lot better. So let's get started and we'll get going. Oh, I gotta get organized too. Yeah, I still use paper maps. I'm the only person in the world, but they work so much better. And Google Maps and iPods and everything like that. So we're gonna continue doing that. Where the hell am I going? Oh yeah. I'm gonna 
this soda. All right. Now the first test, oh, actually the first test is to make sure I can drive without the camera falling over. Uh, but the first test is to see if the iPod connects to the stereo. It's cold last night, so I'm gonna take a second to warm up. But sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm always pretty nervous about that. So, where the hell do we go here? Ah, the camera! Okay, so that's not going to be a long-term solution. So I'm driving up here, looking for the Hotel Rome. There's hotels on the left, hotels on the right. I'm like, where the hell's the Hotel Rome? Ah, there it is. Big, giant Coliseum. And I gotta be honest, it was really difficult to understand whether the theme of this hotel was Rome or Greece. Um, they weren't too specific, but it is an absolutely massive complex. Just water slides, and oh my god, this roller coasters. Oh, it's ridiculous. This is massive. Holy jeez. Why there needs to be a Pantheon flipped upside down, I have no idea, but. So, it's one o'clock local time, so central time, so two o'clock eastern time. We made it all the way to Alexandria, which is just outside of North Dakota. So I'm getting pretty close to where I'm going to stay tonight, so I should get there pretty early. On the drive, there was not too much going on. Made it through Minnesota pretty good. Minneapolis was a breeze. It went really quick. Usually when I go through Wisconsin, there's like tons of dead deer all over the side of the highway. And on the way, I only saw six, which is way lower. The first drive I did, there was like 17, which is crazy. So This is our halfway stop. Now I should be able to get to where I'm going, so I booked a hotel in Minote, which is just on this side, the American side of the border. Oh, and my gas is done. $33, what a great country. Oh, that's so cheap, full tank, unbelievable. I forgot my receipt, but it was 30, oh, here it is, I found it. Uh, and then also I got myself two taquitos for lunch exciting and 60 cent banana which is way cheaper than two dollars for a pack of skittles so i don't understand the prices here it was really like chocolate bars and stuff were really expensive but the, the skittle the bananas were 60 cents which i guess is normal anyway uh, i'm gonna start driving and uh we'll see you in four hours i guess all right, I'm excited. I'm not sure how good the lighting is, but I've gotten to Minote. We're just in front of the hotel right now. So the highlight so far was definitely the uh, taquito. Uh, this Bosco stick was absolutely amazing. It was like just 
melted cheese. It was so good. So now I'm sold on gas station food. It was so good. I'm still eating the Skittles. Like, it's unbelievable how good that meal was. It's fantastic. So I'm gonna go check in, show you the room, and, and tell you about how the day went and once I get inside the room. Okay, so this is the room. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's set up really nicely. I got a bed. I've got all my stuff, uh, like a bathroom and a fridge, so I can get some milk and have some milk tomorrow morning. Although it's a continental breakfast, so that'll do me. The continental breakfast will be all right. I got here at eight o'clock, no, seven o'clock local time. So that's eight o'clock Eastern time, which gives me like three hours before I want to go to bed. So I'm gonna go and get some food, and then I'll be uh, checking in after and let you know what my plans are for tomorrow. All right, cool. So. <clears throat> I went for dinner at Sonic's and then uh, after a little bit of grocery shopping just getting some things that I need. Sonic was alright but I was kind of disappointed. I got a shake and it's got like a little bit of topping on top but then all, all down like inside. I don't know if you can see that. There's no mix or flavor or anything. Kind of weak Sonic. I mean, McDonald's does it, Dairy Queen does it. Why can't you just mix your, your flavor in? Be a pal. Kind of starting to crash. It's, it's only been about an hour. But I realized this pack of Skittles that I'm so pleased about is the share size. Evidently, that means it's too many Skittles for one person to eat in a day. And I'm starting to get really tired. So, yeah. <sighs> Good morning. So it's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm gonna go get some breakfast and then we're gonna leave. The sun's not even up yet. I don't know how sun works but I, th I guess because we're so far north that it takes longer for it to rise or we're at the edge of the time zone. I don't know which but either way it's, it's not quite up so I'll get some breakfast, a continental breakfast at the hotel and then we'll get on the road. I'll check back in after the first stop. Uh, I realized I have my GoPro, and I realized this would be per or Anthony's GoPro, but I realized this would be perfect for taking shots in the car and, and videos in the car and stuff without it being a distraction, sliding all back and forth across the dash. But I brought a cord, and the cord that I have is from an old cell phone instead of from the GoPro, so I can't charge it, so it's pretty pointless. So that's not gonna, there won't be any singing unfortunately today. So I'll check back in after the first uh, gas up and let you know how things are going. Yep, and we'll see you then. So we're on our way. Uh, the sun did come up at about eight o'clock. So I was driving during the day, it wasn't still dark, but that's pretty late. I got to the border about nine and normally you can, you know, just answer questions and get right through and it's no problem. But uh, they decided to have uh, their random search and, and go through and go through all my stuff. They admitted after it's, uh, it was kind of because they don't get a lot of single males there. So I got the joy of, of sitting around. So that took about an hour to get through, uh, which is a bit of a pain. I was like, okay, so I'll try to make it up. I'll go really, really fast. and Well, not really fast. I'll go maybe you know 20 kilometers over the limit, try to make back that time. And as soon as I got to the first town, I wasn't even going that fast. I got pulled over, and the cop pulled me over. He's like, "Ah, you, weren't, you were going about 65 and a 50. It's not, you know, ridiculously fast, but it's fast. So I just slow down, and he gave me a warning, written warning. So now I have written warnings in Montana and Saskatchewan. So working our way, we'll get all 50 states and all 10 provinces, and, and that'll be a good goal for my life. I've stopped here because. Not, there's no gas station here, although there used to be. This is, and I don't know, you can see I framed it up a little bit differently. I don't know if you can see in the background, but there's a grain elevator in the background. And on the grain elevator, it actually says Dog River. I'll get out of the car in a second and, and, and try to zoom in on it. Yeah, this is where they filmed the show Corner Gas. This is actually Dog River, Saskatchewan. The first time I was driving through here, because this is kind of the, the main way to North Dakota from Alberta, I was low on gas, I was driving Maryland, the light was on, it had been on for a little while, and I was like getting nervous, I'm like, oh god, like farmland, maybe I won't come across a gas station, maybe there won't be, you know, I'll maybe run out of gas, I have to call CAA, and as I'm going along, I'm looking 
into this town and I see, I'm like, oh, that kind of looks like the shape of what a gas station might look like. And as I'm getting closer, I'm like, it looks really familiar, but it doesn't look like a normal gas station. And right when I started to get off, I'm like, oh my God, it's a set from Corner Gas. And it hadn't been used in maybe, I don't know, five years. How long has that show been off the air? But yeah, this is where they film Corner Gas. And it used to be great. They used to have, and I'll show you right now. So he's there. Get out. <clears throat> So they used to have the gas station and Ruby's Diner right here. You can see across, there's the uh, grain elevator. So this is on at Dog River. I don't know if it's going, looking into the sun, it might be hard to see. Um, back in the car. It's cold. But yeah, so this is where they did it. And I read an article that they were going to tear down the set because it was dangerous it wasn't safe and kids were getting into it playing into it and it's such a shame because this will be the last time I'll ever stop in uh, I think the town's called Roll Rollin Rollo Rollau Rollau maybe Rollau because you know it's not not a not much going on here but it could have been a, a really good tourist stop on the way and you know I've pulled over I was hoping the the gas station would still be here and I could get a picture with uh, with Ruthie Cohen in the stalls like I did. I got some good ones with Marilyn, so I'll uh, try to sh put them on the video if I know how to use uh, editor as well as I think I do. Cool, so I'll, I'm about three quarters tank full, so when we have to stop for gas, I'll check back in and let you know, and hopefully no more altercations with uh, local law enforcement. So I was going along the Trans-Canada Highway 1. I was about 50 meters behind two transport trucks and a rock hopped up, and look what happened. My poor Ruthie Cohen. <laughs> no. So I'm in Medicine Hat right now. I uh, just stopped for gas, and obviously I'm wearing my Argos Blues. I've got Stamps fans to the left of me, Rider fans to the right. Let's see where we are. See if anybody chirps me as I'm pumping gas. Probably not, but you never know. That takes twice as long as it does when you just go in and pay for it. And I did it at the machine. Unbelievable. Okay, so I've arrived in Banff. I checked into the King Edward Hotel. Got here at about 8 o'clock. Yeah, I think it was around 8 o'clock. So I've got about two hours before I need to go to bed. And then I get up nice and early tomorrow and get to go snowboarding, which will be fun. Do my course. Uh, but first, let me show you around this room. It's pretty sweet. So I don't know. Maybe they upgraded me or something. But, uh,. This is a fancy, fancy room. There's remote, that's the remote control for the light and fan, I guess. Um, there's, oh, check this out. Fireplace, wall-mounted fireplace, crazy. Plasma TV, and it has Netflix and stuff on it too. Um, and the view, well, the view's not that great. It's just the uh, roof of the next building and the parking garage where I've parked my car. Um, but that's all right. Uh, going on further, look into the bathroom, and it's uh, well, it's clean, which it is a good start. Um, but the fancy little towel wraps and typical hotel bathroom stuff. But this is way nicer than the ho than the last time I stayed here. I'm pretty sure, um, or at least uh, there we go. At least I feel it's a lot nicer than the last time I stayed here. Uh, I have to go out, get my stuff from the car, get everything nice and warm inside the room, boots and jackets and all that kind of stuff, uh, so that I'm ready for my course tomorrow. And then maybe if I got a little time left over, I'll go and get myself a beaver tail down on Banff Ave. Today was the first day of course. It was good. 
the vacuuming outside. It's fine, we can wait. Now I'll just get into it. So, today was the first day of course. It was good, there were so many people I knew. The first person I met was in the parking lot. This guy Dalton, who I worked with half the season last year. He's uh, from Calgary. I pulled up right beside him. He's super early in the morning. We were there about a half hour before we needed to be. I then went and got my lift tickets. When I was getting lift tickets, there was a whole bunch of people that I knew from the year before at Lake Louise. Uh, there's Andrew Manuel, who's an absolute legend. Uh, Manuela, who's a huge personality. Uh, James is awesome. OCN was there, who stayed at our place uh, a couple of years ago on her way out west. We just recently got her three and she was on the, pre uh, on the course as well. On top of that, there was also Luke and Adam, who I worked with when I was in Japan. A few other guys from Japan, but those two I, I worked with. Even when we got in at the beginning of the day, uh, the person I, I kind of saw across the room was Mark Schwartz, who is one of the trainers when I worked at Mount St. Louis. So it's like all the different people that I've worked with over all the years uh, were all together, which was kind of nice. A good little experience. Uh, the highlight for me in the day was definitely checking in. I checked in with uh, Andrew McCreaney, who's the Alberta guy. And when I checked in, I went up to him and he said, Name? I said, Barbieri. He goes, oh, Butters, I know you. <laughs> so that was pretty cool that uh, I like that he called me Butters. And then on top of that, nor somewhere in a new hat, I got an award for being the BC evaluator of the winter, I guess. Um, so it was nice to kind of get some recognition. I don't think I've ever gotten anything for doing a good job before, uh, any, any type of award or anything for that. So that was kind of nice, and I got this cap, and they gave me a nice plaque with my name on it. Not Butters, but my, my actual name on it, and uh, framed it and everything, so that's good. But right now, I'm exhausted, I think is the best way to sum it up. I'm going to do some stretching, drinking lots of water, trying to get limber for tomorrow. I also want to make sure that I uh, go out and get groceries, because lunch there is ridiculous. Plus, tomorrow after the course is done, I have to go straight from Sunshine all the way to Vancouver. Not quite sure what time I'll get into Vancouver. I just open up my laptop, I'm going to check out my route, how expensive it's going to be, and then try to get some snacks and stuff for the road. I got an energy drink to help me keep me going for the last two hours. And I don't know uh, how much, uh, what's going on or, or how much it's going to go, but it's also all weather dependent, so I might get snowed in in the passes and they might not even be open so we'll have to check see how it's going for right now I'm going to go check Taxi Mike which is a cheap website or a website for cheap restaurants in Banff and see what uh, good f eats we can get and then early night so so day two on snow was awesome. Had lots of fun, riding was nice and good. Now I'm on my way. I've uh, gotten to the town of Lake Louise. That's some mountain in the background. Uh, we're about to make the last trek of our journey through BC. The reason why I stopped Lake Louise is because it's the last cheap gas before we cross the BC border. Visibility is really good. One of my concerns driving was going through Yohu National Park in the dark because there's deer out, or sometimes there's deer out, maybe not right now because of how cold it is. It's minus one, but usually there's a deer kind of near the highways. In Alberta, they have fences to keep them out of the highways in the national parks, but BC doesn't. So getting through there before the sun goes down is a priority, so that's what I'm focused on. On the way, I've got some treats, so I bought myself teriyaki beef jerky, yummy, two bags of Doritos, I've got one of mom's delicious banana muffins, and energy drink for when things start to get hairy in uh, maybe four or five hours from now, see how far we get. I'll keep checking in and, and let you know how it's going. All right, we made it to Kamloops, which means it's only about three and a half hours left to get to Vancouver. I got myself more beef jerky, 
and some water and stuff because uh, I feel like I'm going to need uh, a little bit of extra hydration. All in all, energy levels are doing alright. It's only about 8.30 uh, BC time, so it should get me to Vancouver before midnight, which is sweet. I was kind of thinking about the day a little bit after and, you know, kind of the funnier things that were happening throughout the day, so I just want to touch on them. Like, uh, one of them was uh, when I got my award yesterday, OCN looked over and, and looked at uh, Kevin's face, my old boss at Lake Louise, and she was like, it was it was priceless, it was really good, he was, <laughs> it was, I got like a shock or, or whatever, but uh, yeah, she said that was really good, and then uh, the other one was uh, all, the, all the Japanese guys, or well, none of them are Japanese, most of them are English, but all the guys that work in Japan were talking about, like, they got this massive truck, and they were so, like, out of their element, like, they got to actually climb into this massive truck, and I went down at the end of the day and walked by and I all I got is like a regular F-150, it's not even that big a truck. But he's like, I can fit my K car in here, no problem. We'll go, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'll probably get to Vancouver and then uh, try to find a hotel somewhere on the North Shore and book about three nights there so that you know I have somewhere to stay tomorrow night and the next night and then I can see about sleeping on uh, Kurt Christopher's couch or, or whatever. This will be my last kinda touch in for the trip I guess because I don't need any more gas and I probably won't want to really do anything when I get to where I'm going uh, otherwise I'll be sleeping in the car so um, thanks for uh, thanks for watching and thanks for joining me on this little bit of a, a road trip from Toronto to Vancouver